I'm Nick, and in this video, we'll be talking about yeast in the body and some of the things you can do to naturally uh, help get rid of excess yeast in the body. Well, the key reservoir of yeast in the body, as you may have guessed, is the digestive system. And candida can thrive in the intestines of the body. And this is a key area that is first colonized by this yeast. And then the yeast move to other areas, such as the vagina, and can even start to secrete uh, a toxic substance and alcohol, which will begin to adversely affect the body. And some people have so much yeast in their digestive system, they have actually gotten somewhat drunk after eating a high carbohydrate meal. The late Dr. William Crook even talks about this in one of his books uh, about a person who was arrested for operating a vehicle while they were intoxicated, and yet they had not consumed hardly any alcohol, if any alcohol at all, but it was due to an abundance of yeast in their digestive system, which simply fermented the carbohydrates into alcohol. Now, one of the key ways yeast may get into the body is they have the ability to attach to the linings of the intestines, and they also may secrete an enzyme that breaks down protein, which is known as a proteinase. And candida can drill holes through tissue when it grows hyphal germ tubes, which that means candida transitions from being just a single-celled yeast into a long thread-like growth, and this can begin to penetrate tissues of the body. So if candida is secreting proteinase, it can break down the proteins inside the intestines, and also the germ tubes begin to grow into the tissue, and eventually candida will be in more contact or closer to the blood supply that is flowing through the intestines. And you may be able to pick up toxins created by the yeast and the alcohol that the yeast creates will also be absorbed into the bloodstream. So let's take a look at some of the research that shows what candida can do when it is inside of the body. A 1996 study published in the journal Infection and Immunity took a cow's aortic vascular endothelial layer. Now this just means it's the inner layer of the aorta, which is in direct contact with the blood that is flowing through it. So it is the first layer of cells that keep the blood inside the blood vessel. The researchers used the endothelial layer to create a hollow tube and put candida inside of that tube. Now, the researchers found that after candida was placed inside of the tissue, it was able to migrate across the tissue barrier after a certain amount of time. If the researchers increased the amount of sugar or the number of candida cells, or the amount of time the yeast was allowed to remain inside the endothelial layer, the rate of migration to the outside of that tissue layer always increased. So this study shows how candida can break through tissue layers and begin to migrate beyond the physical barrier presented by these tissue layers. A 1981 study published in Infection and Immunity used mice and put candida yeast directly into their gastric system. The study found that after these mice were inoculated with the yeast, the candida would begin to migrate to other parts of their body in three hours time and they found that the spleen, kidneys, and liver of the mice were colonized with yeast. And the study also looked at how long the candida could remain in 
the gastrointestinal system of these mice, and they found that candida could persist up to 10 weeks in the gastrointestinal system. A 1983 study published in Infection and Immunity looked to see how well candida would penetrate uh, of endothelial vascular layer. The study found that the candida yeast would burrow deeply into this tissue layer within 60 minutes of time. And the authors speculated that candida was using some type of enzyme to accomplish this. So we can see that candida may be able to rapidly break down tissue and work its way into different parts of the body from the intestines. And of course, the intestines are probably the most important reservoir of yeast in the human body. So if you have too much yeast in your body, how do you go about getting rid of it? Well, one thing you can do is start a low sugar diet and that will help starve out the yeast. And another thing you can do is to take antifungal natural items and ingest them. One suggestion is black currant juice. Research has shown that black currant juice can inhibit candida growth, which means it will put it to a complete end. Along with the black currant juice, you may want to ingest certain antifungals such as coconut oil and garlic. These antifungals will help to actually kill off the yeast in your digestive system. If you'd like a more thorough understanding of how to attempt to get rid of yeast in the digestive system, you can check out Candida Hub. The link to our primary gut yeast infection page will be listed in the description, and there you can find out uh, about a cleanse you can do to help remove excess yeast from the intestines. Well, for more information on this topic, you can check out the first link in the description below to the article on Candida Hub, and you can learn more about yeast in the body and exactly how it might work its way from the intestinal system into the other parts of the body. And on Candida Hub, we have a lot of information about natural remedies and solutions for yeast infections, so if you have some time, you may want to stop by and check it out. And while you're there, you can learn about a 12-hour natural treatment for yeast infections that will end recurrent yeast infections and keep them gone. And again, it will get rid of yeast infection symptoms within just 12 hours of starting this treatment. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you get better very soon. See ya.